For more videos like this, feel free to check out my website, techwithtim.net, and subscribe to my channel, Tech With Tim. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to log user key presses and save those key presses in a meaningful way in a text file. Now the module that we're going to be using for this is Pi Input. You can see right here, this is what it's called. It is a third party module not included with the default installation of Python, which means our first step in this video is going to be installing Pi Input. So what we need to do is obviously we have to go to our command prompt because we're just going to use pip to do this. Uh, pretty straightforward. Bring up your command prompt. Simply type pip install and then pi uh, input. Okay, so just forget the i there. Wait for that to run, and once that goes through, you should have pi input installed. If for some reason, your pip is not working. Reinstall Python, and when you reinstall Python, make sure you add or check the box that says add Python to path and install pip, okay? And that should fix your issue. If you're having any other problems, leave a comment down below. Okay, so we're first what we need to do is we're gonna set up a, well, we need to actually bring these imports in. So we need to import pi input and then from pi input dot keyboard, we're gonna import key and we're gonna input listener. Now listener is what's gonna listen for our key events. So let's start by writing that. So what we need to do is we're just gonna say with and then listener. Then we're gonna have some brackets like this and we're gonna say on underscore press equals on underscore press just follow along with this for one second. And then on underscore release is gonna equal on underscore release like that. Now these on press and on release are what we're gonna code in just a second. And these are gonna be the functions that are called when a key is pressed and when a key is released. Feel free to change these names if you'd like to. Okay, and we're just gonna say as now listener, except this is gonna be lowercase. And then in this loop, we're simply gonna do listener dot join, okay? And what this is going to do is just constantly keep running this loop until we break out of it. And you'll see that in a second. So now I need to create two functions on press and on release. So we're going to do is we're going to say define on press. This is going to take a key and then we'll just pass in here. And then we're going to define on release. Same thing in here, a key and we will pass. Now, actually, what we're going to do on on press is we're just going to print out the key just so we can see this working, first of all, and then we'll move into some other stuff. So we're just going to print. And then this is a fancy way to print this key out. You don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. But we're just going to dot format this with key so that it throws it in there like that. OK, so this is just simply going to put key in our string. Okay, so on release, we're going to add one bit of functionality just so to make sure that we're able to break out of this loop. And you will see that in one second. So we're going to say if key equals equals key dot and then ESC, which stands for escape, we're going to return false. And all this is going to do is break out of this loop if we hit the escape key. So now let's test our program and see if everything is working. Okay, so we can see that we get the window up here. And if I start typing some stuff, you can see it says JS, JSS, and then it just tells me exactly what keys I hit. Now, if I hit like the shift key or the caps lock key, uh, it'll tell me all of those as well. Okay, so now that we have that, that's great, but we want to actually do something meaningful with this. So right now it's just giving us like a bunch of letters and these keys like this. We want to save this into probably a text file or something that we're gonna be able to look at because most likely if you're creating a key logger, you probably want to do something with the keys that are being pressed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna implement a few variables here and explain what they do in just a second. So I'm just gonna start by saying count equals zero, keys equals a blank list. And then inside of on press, I'm going to say global keys and count. Now I'm also going to create another function here. And this one is going to be called write underscore file. And what this is going to do is exactly what it says. It's going to write to a file. So what we're going to say is we're going to say with open and then a text file name, whatever you want. In this case, mine's log.txt. And then we're going to put a mode here. Okay. Now, if the first time you're running this, you don't have a text file created and you're too lazy to make one called whatever you want to call it, just put this as W because what W does is it means write. And if that file does not exist, it's simply going to create one. So the first time you run it, W works fine. But after that, you have to use a, okay. And we're going to do with open log.txt in append mode. That's what that stands for as F and sorry, this needs to take keys. 
And all we're going to do in here is we're going to loop through all the keys and we're just going to write them into the file. So for key in keys, and then we'll simply do f dot write key like that. And this is going to write all of our keys into the file for us. Now you might ask, well, okay, what's the point of this keys list and this count variable? Well, the thing is, if our user somehow able is able to uh, break the program or like quit out of the program, we want to make sure that we're not just writing this at the end because say, for example, the user's on the computer for like an hour and they're typing stuff and we're storing all their keys in this key list. And then all of a sudden they quit the program somehow without hitting the escape key. None of that is going to be written to the text file. So what this count variable is going to allow us to do when I implement it in just a second is every so many keys, we're going to update the text file. So this way we're not constantly rewriting it every second, but after the user hits a certain amount of keys, then we're going to load that or, write all that data into the text file. So I guess I should probably um, add to our keys list if we're going to be using that. So whenever the user hits a key, we're just going to do keys dot append that key. We're going to add one to count. So count plus equals oops, count plus equals one like that. And we can continue to print this if you want, although it's not going to be necessary because everything is going to go in our log.txt file. Now what I'm also going to do in here is I'm just going to throw a little if statement. I'm going to say if count is greater than or equal to, and you can pick what number you want to do here. I'm just going to pick 10. So this means every 10 keys is how often we're going to update the file. Now, obviously, if you think this is going to be running for a long time, you might want to make this longer or larger. Uh, you could make it one. You could not have the count variable if you want. Do whatever you want for this, okay? Now I'm going to say we're going to reset our count equals zero. We're going to write to our file passing it our keys list, which is up here and is going to have stored all these keys. And then we're just going to reset keys and keys is going to be equal to blank like this. Okay. So that is, I think at least should be working. Let's try this out. Oh, wow. The whole time I was typing that was recording my keys. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> let's see here. If I start typing, hello, my name is, oh, and we get an issue. Right argument must be a string, not key code. Ah, I forgot about that. So pretty much in here, it's just getting mad at us because we don't have string. So just throw a string in there and then it should work. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, and hit escape. And now we're going to go in log.txt. Okay, and here we go. So that was from previous runs. And now look at this. Well, it did what we wanted it to do. It printed all of the things into our text file, but this is not meaningful information. And we probably want it to look a little bit better than this and not have quotations and not have backspace keys. So I'm going to show you how we can do that right now. So let's just clear this file, save that. And now let's deal with write file here. So we're not writing these ridiculous characters into our text file. So what I want to do is I want to write each word that the user types into one line. So the way I'm going to do that is every time the user hits the space key, I'm going to add a new line to the file. So first of all, what I want to do is every time we're looping through keys, I'm going to say K is equal to str key. And then I'm going to say dot not remove dot replace and then quotation comma blank space. Now what this does is removes the quotation marks. So if you remember in here, we had something that looked like Actually, it was single quotation marks, my bad, uh, like three, like if you hit that, that key would come up in quotation marks. So this is just going to remove that for us. I don't know why it shows up in quotation marks, but anyways, so that's going to turn it into a string, replace the quotation marks. Now that we have it in a form that we can read properly, we're first of all, just going to check if this is a space character. So if the user hit the space bar, so the way that we can do this, we can say if K dot find this is kind of the cheap way to do it, but we're just going to do this dot space uh, space in here equals equals or actually uh, is greater than zero. So what this find is going to do is it's going to look in the key because whenever we hit the, the space bar, it does something like this. There's like key dot space. OK, that's what's returned as key. So we're going to look for space in our string. We're going to find that. If it occurs more than one or more than zero times, so once, uh, then we're going to write a space character to our uh, line. So in this case, we're actually just going to add a new line. The way we add a new line in a file is just backslash n. This just denotes like go to the next line. Okay. All right. After this, we're also going to check. So if it's space, that's fine. But if it is any of the other keys like command shift backspace, we don't want to write that into our file. We don't want it to say like backspace or command. So I'm just going to say if and then or I say say l if k dot find 
and then key equals equals negative one. Now what happens in find is if it doesn't find the string that you're looking for, and I guess I better actually put a capital K because I'm pretty sure it's capital, then it returns us a negative one value. So if key does not exist, meaning that we hit a key like Q, W, like any of the letters of the number keys, then we will simply write that into the file. So we'll say F dot write and then whatever K was, so that key, okay? And I will just show you this working now and then explain it really quickly. So if we run this, and I start typing, hello, my name is, and I'll backspace a few times, space, add some stuff, okay? And get rid of all of that and close the file or close the program, sorry. You can see we get why, hello, my name is space, 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 aha, space, 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 hello. And then we get a bunch more spaces. And that is because uh, whenever you hit the space key, right, it's adding a new line. So we could now check if the line before that is blank, then let's not continue to do that or whatever, like stuff like that. And you can continue and checking all these different keys and seeing what they are. Um, but this is all I'm gonna show you for right now. Knowing this, you have a basis for how to get keys, how to store them in a text file, and you guys can play around with creating a better key logger. I don't wanna make this video too long, so that's all I'm gonna show you today. If this helped you out, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you again in another tutorial.